Victoria 3 beta training is bad and needs to change. Thanks for watching, hit that like button and see you next time. Well, okay, maybe I can expand a bit more on what I mean and solutions I think could benefit the game. But first, from the recent leaks, we were able to gather some information on the currently implemented trading system. And while information flows freely on all the medias about the game's leak, I will reserve myself to only share a screenshot officially intended to be public throughout the video. The current trading system is simplistic in nature. You have a country with its market. You have an item. The item is a price in your market. Price is bad. It sucks. But with a few button presses, you can find another country's market with better prices and import the item, closing the gap in difference between both countries, which is good for you. But a few more clicks and the issues become extremely apparent. First, there's no real production. You only have the market prices that go up or down depending on the availability of the item, which might be an abstraction too much. The more you produce cotton, the lower the price will go until it reaches a floor. Then, who knows what happened to your products. Because the items are not physically modelized in the world, we can only stare at green and red numbers, which frankly is subpar when Victoria 3 is presented as a game centered on politics and trade. The agreements, as far as we know, are also one-sided. If you establish imports or exports, you get to pull the maximum benefits at the cost of other nations. And the same goes for every country in the game. And if your requirements for a good skyrocket, as for example you expand your factories or you launch a massive war, then you would be required to trade micro to adjust your market's pricing to be more favorable. Now while I have not played the leak beta, I can tell after a few hours this become extremely annoying to juggle around. I believe that I have the potential solution of a proper trading system implementation. One which I already shared with viewers in a video predating the announcement of Victory Tree itself. These recommendations can be easily categorized in three main components. First, stockpiles. Stockpiles are not only a possibility as exposed by Victoria 2 and Earth's Apparent 4, but they are a critical and integral element of a trading simulator. Allowing the player to keep an emergency reserve of cotton will allow for more leeway and tolerances against foreign manipulations and could be a great tool to starve out a strongly industrialized country requiring vast importation to feed its textile mills. Having strategic resources stockpiles like ammunition, food and weapons will also be imperative for a country planning intense military campaign while also holding limited production capabilities. The second component is markets and spheres. I believe the current implementation in Victory is on a good path. Your country's market has a share price for commodities throughout the board, with the exception of isolated areas of your empire. The idea could be pushed forward even more with the support of stockpiles shared amongst you and your spherelings, as well as an integrated diplomacy system for commerce. This will be a Visio interface for trading. You would have your own spheres market and under spheres market laid out with links between them. From the interface you could set embargoes or tariffs on different markets. Using these financial tools to force concession of foreign nations was a prime and favor method of operations during the Victorian era. The system will allow some utilization of your fleets to have an impact on smaller markets. We are after all playing a gunboat simulator. As your influence grows in foreign markets with the help of your navy, colonies and semi-independent trade companies, you will gain an increased share of the local production, going directly to your own stockpiles if you undertake proper diplomatic plays. As your persistence continues and you wrestle with other foreign nations for the prime loot, you would eventually be able to seize the means of production of the foreign nations. And in full imperialistic portrayal of foreign influence, you would fully integrate the land under your direct economical control. That is, of course, until your scientific researches and social politics release the wrong guy's interpretation of governance, which starving populations find appealing enough to proclaim it being the truth. 
Of course, a little foreign nudge with large drop of guns and ammo from their own personal stockpiles did help sway them a little bit, I think. The final company is Bilateral Negotiations, where you'll be able to set trade orders with foreign powers, either lump some amount of goods or over a periodical amount of time. Hence, you could sell off your stocks of steel and lumber to an ally that is launching vast infrastructure projects. Or you could negotiate an oil to food agreement to subsidize the needs of your population. I think the balancing of foreign acquisitions and diplomatic plays countered the lack left by the abstraction too far of the military system. Now if we go back to the dev diary number 9, national market, we can see the implemented system in the unintended premature clips we've had is in line with the vision that was advanced. Yes, the argument made is absolutely sensible. Why would misery be able to hoard the world's production of cement? And I think we have to reflect back on Victoria 2 system to have our answer. What made Victoria 2 game experience a world's difference from other strategy games? I'm sure many others just like me can agree on one thing. It's the modelization of the population and the economy. Nothing is more insane than misery hoarding world stock of cement. Or Bengalese farmers becoming the richest class of the world. It's what gave character and created narratives in Victoria 2 games. It's what made the game so different. The parent streamlined approach that was chosen for Victoria 3 just comes up as an uncut gem. It brings fascinating skill and performance gains, but fiercely lack on the active engagement required by core feature. And you know, the day is split in three parts. Warning, you could have the production that happens by the pops and factories from their own input buffer. In the afternoon, the goods are moved from the output buffers or the stockpile. You go into the input buffer of factories and pops, and the money changes in to complete the transaction. In the evening, international trade packs and foreign exchanges are conducted. Then on to the next morning where the production picks up again. And then it keeps going so on and so on. That will be an advantageous way to use the three ticks per day experience that we're getting from Victoria 3. In conclusion, even if the stockpiles have been a sort of liquor mana, I still believe it will be highly favorable to what we have not seen yet from the Victoria 3 beta. However, I am extremely intrigued in knowing what is your opinion of the trading system implemented right now. What changes would you make? to get the best experience possible. Otherwise, this has been Stradjo. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. And see you next time.